Well, good morning, all. We're going to be looking at Psalm 46 today. If you have your Bibles, I'd invite you to turn with me there. And I brought my glasses, I remember. <laughs> Psalm 46. For the director of music of the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth, a song. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God bless the reading of his word. Michael Seckler shares this story from his life. My son Micah died in 2012 from kidney disease and complications. As he lay dying, I wrote this in my journal. Sitting at the bedside of my son uh, at 3.48 in the morning, weeping like crazy. Bertrand Russell once said that no one can sit at the bedside of a, of, of a dying child and believe in God. Well, I beg to differ. My faith is the thing that strengthens me. How else can I make it through? We cannot do anything else. This fire drains away everything else. Nothing else satisfies my soul. I would love to save my son. I, I would easily give my life for his. But God has, chosen, has not chosen that path for us. He has chosen a veil of tears. But he will walk through it with me. Micah now walks with Jesus, and Jesus still walks with me. We end this uh, series uh, on a psalm that sings the praises of God's city, Zion. It's also a psalm that has made an indelible mark on the church throughout history. Its message continues to ring true to us since the moment it was written. It's a message of hope for the people of God of all time. Uh, this is one of the psalms by the sons of Korah. Uh, they wrote 11, possibly 12 of the 150 psalms uh, in the book of Psalms. They are thought to be the sons of Korah uh, who led a revolt against Moses. Not the sons, Korah did. Uh, he and his followers were swallowed up by the earth for their rebellion against God and against Moses. His sons, of course, did not follow in his footsteps and remained faithful to God. They became known as gatekeepers for the Israeli places of worship. Uh, the tabernacle, the, the tent of meeting prior to the temple, and then in post-exile, in the post-exile return to Israel. They are Levites who, who kept the band name, as it were. Um, the line, though the earth give way, could be indicative of what 
befell the original group's father. Regardless, though, this psalm, this psalm's message still holds true for us today. What can we learn from this well-known psalm? Take a look at verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. When God's people are surrounded by the enemy, when the world is turned upside down, they run to God who is always there to protect and empower and help in their trials. God is described as a refuge, which of course also means shelter. Uh, the image that, that came to mind for me was being in a bunker while bombs are, are falling uh, or, or being a soldier holding a shield uh, while arrows are falling around him. And in seeking God's strength, it means that this shelter becomes a fortress. The idea here is that we run for the shelter right away when we know the storm is coming. We don't sit around and, and look everywhere but where we know God is. Because as the verse tells us, God is very near us. If we truly believe God is our refuge, then we can have the same attitude as the sons, uh, as the sons write in verse 2 and 3. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, because God is our shelter and strong tower, we, we don't have to be afraid of what we might face. Uh, during an earthquake some years ago, the inhabitants of a small village were generally very much alarmed, but they were at the same time surprised at the calmness and apparent joy of an old woman whom they all knew. At length, one of them, addressing the old woman, said, Mother, are you not afraid? No, the woman said. I rejoice to know that I have a God who can shake the world. Now, I, I've never been caught in an earthquake. I've never experienced that. But we all have seen the devastation that earthquakes cause. Um, natural disasters, of course, can strike fear in us. But it, it doesn't take something that large to make us afraid. It's also interesting to note that worry and fear can be two sides of the same coin. It, it, it could be an impending surgery. It, it could be the loss of a job and, and wondering uh, how to make ends meet. It could be a family member moving far away. It could even be something as simple as walking into a room full of strangers. But it's made clear to us whether we're experiencing turmoil externally or internally, we can let it go because God is very near and will shield us from the worst of it. Did you get those pictures, bud? The world may be in chaos, but the city of God is paradise. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. Now, most commentators would agree that the writers are talking about Jerusalem. Uh, just as Eden had a river running through it, so Jerusalem is pictured with a spring running through the city. It's a paradise. It's a shelter. But we as believers also know of another place that will have a river running through it. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. 
down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22, 1 to 3. We can be unafraid because God is our refuge now. But we can also be unafraid because we have a refuge in the city of God waiting for us. John 3.36 says that whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. And Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 24, Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word... And believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. And in John chapter 10, Jesus tells us how we can find real life. Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be kept safe. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Just as the psalm speaks to God as our shelter, here in John chapter 10, Jesus tells us he can shelter us. He can bring protection from those who would try to steal our lives, steal our freedom. And just as we can live without fear, we can live with peace. Maybe that, maybe that's obvious, but uh, verse 6 says, Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. What really stands out to me about this psalm is this image uh, the, the theme that it goes from chaos to peace, chaos to peace, or the chaos of the world versus the peace from God. Many people are aware of the statue, Christ the Redeemer, that stands high above uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Less known is the statue, uh, Christ the Redeemer of the Andes, which stands on the border between Argentina and Chile. Those two countries had been at war over their borders. Uh, as a celebration of the peaceful resolution of the long and bitter boundary dispute, which came after a treaty was signed in 1902, the statue was unveiled on March 13, 1904. The 25-foot-high statue is of Christ standing on a globe, holding a cross in his left hand and raising his right arm as a signal for peace. Engraved at the feet in Spanish are the words, Sooner shall these mountains crumble into dust than Chileans and Argentinians break the peace which at the feet of Christ, the Redeemer, they have sworn to maintain. To commemorate the peace, it is said that the statue was made from the bronze of melted down cannons that had been used as instruments of war. We can have confidence in God despite the battles uh, the world has against each other and against God. We live in a world of constant everything or instant everything, especially instant information. And unfortunately, even Christians can get sucked into the war of words. But information is not necessarily knowledge. And it certainly isn't wisdom. In the book of Job, the author wrote, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. The author of Psalm 111, verse 10, said something very similar as well as Solomon who who wrote in the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 9, verse 10. And then James wrote, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, 
who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. And then Paul, of course, gives Jesus the title, the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1.30. Now the nations might rage and roar against God's people. The kingdoms might move against them, but believers can be confident that when God utters his voice, the earth and all that is within it melts. In other words, I, I see this as letting God be our voice when interacting with others, especially on social media. We don't do the church any favors when our voices are trying to shout over the world. When Christ was before the authorities, he didn't argue. He didn't fight. His, his trust was in God and was in the plan that God had for him. God tries to encourage us with the words he gave Isaiah. In quietness and in confidence will be your strength. Isaiah 30, 15. Jesus is the answer to the troubles that the world faces. We know that, but I don't mean that in a simplistic sense. Bringing the message of Jesus to the worries and fears that, that try to take control of our world can bring hope and peace to the brokenness the world faces. I think that's also why God encourages us to be still. In stillness, there is peace and opportunity to hear God's voice. But there's also an element of self-control there when we are still. Before refrigerators, people used ice houses to preserve their food. Ice houses had thick walls, no windows, and a, and a tightly fitted door. In winter, when streams and lakes were frozen, large blocks of ice were cut out, hauled to ice houses, and covered with sawdust. Often, the ice would last well into the summer. One man lost a valuable watch while working in an ice house, and he searched diligently for it, carefully raking through the sawdust, but he couldn't find it. His fellow workers also looked, but their efforts, too, proved futile. A small boy who heard about the fruitless search slipped into the ice house during the noon hour and soon emerged with the watch. Amazed, the men asked him how he found it. The boy replied, I closed the door, lay down in the sawdust, and just kept very still. Soon I heard the watch ticking. Often the question is not whether God is speaking, but whether we are being still enough and quiet enough to hear And as I say, there's an element of control of the self when we can make ourselves sit in quiet, sit in stillness, letting God speak. We live in a society that, that barely knows how to sit still. And when we're confronted with the chaos, uh, we need to choose stillness in Christ versus the noise of the world. It takes time and practice, of course, to learn to quiet the voices inside of us. It's not something that happens instantaneously. Even I, even I can speak to that. But when we do, when, when we allow that to happen, we will hear God's still, small voice and also be in a position to better respond to what the world is screaming about. The Lord of hosts, the, the God of battle and Lord of the heavenly hosts is with us. Knowing that God is with us and is our stronghold is enough to bring peace in the most devastating of situations. This promise is to all believers. Apparently God wanted to hear us, want us to hear that again. Uh, 
The promise is to all believers, whatever troubles they have to face. It reminds us that those whose trust is in God don't have to fear natural disasters or the political ones. For God is in control over all. I like this prayer that I discovered online. Lord, bring your refuge and healing strength. Make me still in your safety. When what seems permanent begins to crumble, when devastation ravages the earth, when powers that be claim your authority, let us remember the joy you have set before us. Lord, help us to let go of fear and doubt. Make us still in your waters of gladness. We have a shelter we can run to. A river that will heal us. And a peace that we can carry amidst the chaos. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you uh, for your word this morning. Thank you for Psalm 46, and I know full well the impact that's made throughout history. I mean, it, it even captured someone like Luther who wrote, The Mighty Fortress is Our God. Lord, forgive us when we ran everywhere else but to you. And Holy Spirit, remind us that the shelter is right there by us. That we don't have to look far to find our fortress, to find our protector, to find our hope. And Lord, we live in a world that speaks of chaos daily. We live in a world that makes everything a crisis. And so God, I pray, pray that we could find stillness as your people. We could find silence and in the silence hear your voice. And Lord, forgive us when we have shouted uh, at the world, when we have tried to scream louder than the world. Help us, Lord, to speak out of the quiet and to be able to be a voice of hope, a voice of truth, a voice of peace, a voice of grace. And help us, Lord, to bring Jesus into every situation. To bring Jesus with us when we're confronted by something ungodly. To bring Jesus with us when someone wants to call, call us down with names. To bring Jesus with us when someone needs hope and healing from the hurt. Thank you, Lord God, for your power, power made uh, that makes, that meets us in our weakness. And Lord, Allow us, help us to be um, fools for Christ, I guess, God. To speak of the foolishness of the gospel to the supposed wisdom of the world. We love you, Lord, and we thank you uh, for our time today. Continue to be with us here, Lord. And Whatever it is, Holy Spirit, that, that we need to walk away with today, I pray, I pray that you will, you will touch us with that. In Jesus' name.